Welcome to our fall slash the beginning of winter black bear and camping hunt. Eric and I have the six wheeler out with us today. We are on some terrain that we tried looking for black bears earlier in the spring. We've already seen several moose, which is pretty exciting, but that's not what we're after. Moose season has closed, so we're out here looking for a black bear specifically. And we're new to this, so we don't really quite know what we're doing. We've done a lot of research. We've researched the topography of the area that we're at, and we are going to pick a camping site first. That's our main mission today. We're out here for a few days. We brought something along that's gonna make this trip absolutely amazing, and we are excited about that. We're gonna keep going and see, see if we see something. Dang it! It's just a tree! That's my like third false bear I've seen today. See him with your bare eye, he's so big. Oh, I see him right here. Oh no, that is that is a dead tree. That's where we're headed towards Mount Denali, and we know the area kind of where we want to camp. We've been there before, but we're gonna go see if the creek crossing is low enough that we can get across. We've been getting a lot of rain, and then it heated up and the snow started to melt. So let's go see if we can cross the creek. Grizzly. No, but it looked really like moist to I me, mean, like new. We crossed the creek. We're heading to exactly where we wanted to come hunting. We found a very good sign. You might not want to see it, but this is a good sign right here. <laughs> see how it's, fresh it is. It's not extremely old, but it's not fresh. It's only frozen on the outside. It's not frozen on the inside. So you're saying under 24 hours? It. That is. That's awesome. I don't know if that's a grizzly or a black bear. We're after a black bear trying to put some meat in the freezer for us, and it was eating highbush cranberries. I didn't know they ate highbush cranberries, but we ran across a patch earlier that was just loaded with highbush cranberries. So maybe we'll keep a, an eye out where the highbush cranberries are going. That's awesome. Looking on the side of that hill, right? You're not really shocked to see moose all the way back here? It's a bull, too. It's a bull? Yeah, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's a three and a two. <laughs> Dang it! Yeah. We're seeing more bull moose than... Moose season ended a few weeks ago, and this place, we're seeing so many moose, bull moose too. This is really cool. We just spotted one, we thought it was an animal. 
of some sort laying down, but it wasn't moving. And then we spooked it, the noise of the six wheeler, and it jumped up. It's really far from us and it's staring directly at us. It might be a, a fork moose on one side. I can't tell though. Well, we made it to the same area that we came three years ago. And this is the exact spot that Eric saw a massive bear. It was probably, I don't know, it was far few miles away for sure and he spotted it with his bare eyes and then he looked with his binoculars and it was a bear ferociously eating berries it was probably about a month earlier three years ago so late september and it was eating berries at the base of a hill and it was on the north side of a hill so usually they're on the south side they say so we're trying to look at these south facing slopes and the bears are probably still actively eating but we're getting brisk right now so they are probably also looking to maybe start the den process um so we're hoping to, we're hoping to see them kind of like running around that's going to be our best bet picking our campsite is always tricky but i think i think this is a really nice area and we only have a few hours to set up camp and get some wood and get nice and cozy look at how warm they are Bo's got his uh, bear bell on, notification bell, and then Bandit's uh, doing good too. He's doing good. Let's head down that hill and okay. get to camp. brought our little pack rat trailer with us. That's what this little meat wagon is called. And we've actually only used this thing one time prior to this, and that was a few weeks ago during our unsuccessful moose hunt. And I learned a big lesson with this thing, and that was that when you're loading it, you need to pay attention to how you're loading it. I didn't. I basically put lightweight sleeping bags at the bottom, and then I put heavy stuff on top. And then on top of that, I put 10 gallons of gas on top and a tote full of our food and I lost count of how many times we flipped this thing because it was so top heavy. This time I put like tent poles, very heavy stuff at the bottom, our sleeping bags on top, and then a really light tote with our tent in it. And I was just amazed at how much better this thing did. It was like glued to the ground. So we didn't flip it over and we didn't damage it this time. And we fit a lot of stuff in here. So this thing, pretty cool little trailer. I think it goes like that, right? Like a little. It's a struggle putting a tent together you've never put up. And we've never put this one up. And this tent has some very cool features. We've got the main tent put up with a little, uh, I think it's called a floor print. It helps to protect the underneath of the tent. And we're gonna put the rain fly up. And then this tent actually has a heating element, which is awesome because it's very cold out here. Got those ones. How do you get the spider protectors? These are uh, great things. They protect the tent from getting ripped, I think. Whoa, we're definitely gonna stand out. Stand out. Yeah, we're not camping Getting it lined up. Oh my gosh, this thing is huge. This is the coldest, but the most beautiful camping spot we've ever picked. 
We're almost there. This thing's it's got a couple, couple more stakes in. I don't know. Maybe a... Uh, Interior work? Yeah, maybe move to the inside next. Little arctic entrance. Might as well roll this one up too. We're gonna be going in there. I feel like for how beautiful today is, we're oh, gonna it's be... it's like already a lot warmer. Kind of in a rush because this tent has a wood stove and I brought just enough like kindling to get the fire started. And we have so much gear with us that I couldn't pack any firewood. So we're gonna have to go cut some. As soon as we get this thing all situated, what we're doing right now is we're kind of pulling the wall of the tent outward and it's gonna give us a more room on the inside. And it's also gonna keep this thing down in the wind. It's not windy right now, but I imagine it can get crazy up here really fast. Oh yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. That's been a long time since I did this knot. Is this your like bailing knot? From your ranching days? It's a trucker's knot, yeah. Yes, cinch it down. That's a cinch knot? Yeah, go like this. I'm thoroughly amazed at that. Can you teach me that? I can. Tie it down. You want me to bring all this stuff in? Sure. Okay, cool. Cool. You can do it. Oh, I almost had it. Got it? Oh my gosh, I actually got it. These things are so hard to put together for me. <laughs> Here, you gotta go. This stove has to come way forward. Oh, right there or something, right? There goes. What's going on here? Something in there. What is it? I've never used one of these before. So I gotta, I'll stick this on on the outside last. Thing. Look at that! My second wood stove I've ever put in. Alright. Wood stove installed. Let's get that spark arrestor on the top. How do you reach? How do you reach that? Here, let me undo these. Since we're gonna be running a wood stove in this tent, this tent is designed for it and it has vents. It's got a high one here. It goes all the way through the outside portion of the tent and then the tent itself leads inside and it's got a low one in there too. It's got some silicone material. This thing is just meant for wood stoves. It's meant for cold climate. So let's get this little chimney top on. All right, thanks Eric. We got this set up just in time and we have to go find some wood. There was only a few spruce beetle trees around here, so we're going to have to go look and maybe we'll even see a bear. You never know. Bushiest tree I've ever seen. 
Did you see the sunrise at all? I know. I mean sunset. sunset. You could see the pink on Mount Denali. Good job. That is enough wood, hopefully, for the whole trip. That was a bumpy ride in here. It's 10 p.m. Eric and I have eaten dinner, nothing too fancy, just some mountain house meals. And we're relaxing by this incredible fire. I don't even know what to say about it. It's Eric and I really like wood stoves and we really like dry heat. And it has just been amazing in here. I've been in like a trance just sitting by this. We're so warm and it's freezing outside. So it's really, it's really quite quite the experience, honestly. And the dogs are totally content with it as well. Everything went fairly good today. It was really, really beautiful. I mean, how can you complain when you're surrounded by these mountains? And hopefully tomorrow we can get up early and get get back, back at it and actually do some bear hunting. <laughs> Things are looking pretty promising this morning. Eric and I got up early. The sun is just coming up and Mount Denali is pink. We've seen three sets of moose. One, I think it was a cow, it was just right here, just grazing. We saw three way over there eating and then a bull and a female way down that valley. This spot is awesome. You can see like almost 360, well you can see 360, but we're not necessarily glassing 360. So this would have been good for moose hunting season, but we've yet to see a bear. It's cold out here, but Eric is making us some coffee and then we can keep glassing. Oh no, I see him. They're coming up this way. We came back in the tent to warm up for a minute. I cannot believe how cold it is out there. I pretty much dressed for winter and my toes are cold and my face is cold, but this little stove, has been kicking butt. <laughs> Last night it kept us extremely warm, but I probably got up and put wood on it like it felt like 10 times. So it's not very efficient, but it definitely heats this place up. But this morning we were noticing that there was some smoke coming out of some of the little seals where the pipe hooks together. And there's a spark arrestor on the top of this thing that it comes with with like a little hood. And I noticed there's a lot of creosote in here. So I went outside and I took off the spark arrestor and it was completely clogged with creosote so there was no smoke coming out and the fire was kind of going down we took that off this thing just took off and it's like 100 degrees in this tent now so we're gonna have to figure something out with that little spark arrestor the wood we burn up here has some major creosote in it oh yeah semi-uneventful morning we did see just a ton of moose this place is just amazing us bulls cows uh, another young moose but it's noon and we're gonna take Bandit with us and we're gonna head out to some new areas, leave Bo at the tent, see if we can see a bear, nothing yet. That's a coyote. That was absolutely crazy. Bandit didn't even see it. That was the closest we've ever been to a coyote. It's coming around. Where is it? <coughs> so I don't think it's coming back. <coughs> that was gonna come up to me, I'm pretty sure. That was amazing. What a beautiful that was a beautiful looking coyote. going out there. Stay there. Damn, nobody else out here. That was 
awesome. I think he's just having some fun. He's cruising this valley. Check this out, almost a full gallon of high bush cranberries had to make our trip worth it. We've been exploring and doing a lot of glassing. Still haven't really seen anything since the coyote, so we're gonna head back and start a fire and glass in the valley where we camped. It looks like it did. Put this right in the middle. Get started. Wow, that's really cool. Can you see in the one valley? What? Can you see in the one valley? The one we drove up? Yeah. Yeah. We're trying the next hill over? Yeah. Well, we're giving a little longer tonight. We still have a little bit of daylight. The sun went down. Temperature's dropping extremely fast. But we're getting like these crazy skies that we haven't seen since last winter. So, it's beautiful out here. Pad Thai chicken and pasta primavera for dinner. Tonight's actually gonna be the coldest night. It's supposed to get down to eight degrees Fahrenheit. So we're really gonna test out the capabilities of this little wood stove in this tent and hopefully we stay warm. And then I think tomorrow we camp with a new game plan. We're gonna try to stick around camp and just glass here all day. and Hopefully something shows up. We're making peanut butter and jelly the third day I guess it's our second day of hunting. It's not going that well so far. It's pretty windy outside. We've been out there all morning and have seen zero bears, which is really concerning and strange, honestly. We've been hunting before or just out and Eric has usually seen bears in the when he's spotting and usually they're moving around pretty erratically. So we feel like we're not gonna miss them if we're glassing, but I don't know what's going on. I hope. I hope that we see something. Patience is definitely the name of the game, so we gotta get back out there after we eat these. Or maybe we'll eat these out there.
not seeing much. We're going to switch things up a little. I'm going to take the six-wheeler, hopefully make it to that next valley over and glass over there. Errol's going to stay put. She's going to glass this area. Hopefully we see something. I have returned to camp. My original plan to go to that next valley didn't work out. I couldn't get through the trail. It was iced over. So I went just really far into valley that we've been glassing this whole time. I got a better view at everything. I saw some massive grizzly tracks bigger than my boot, which was pretty cool. Not the bear we're after. I didn't see the grizzly, but at least I saw some action. I'm back up here at camp. The day has completely just cleared and we have this beautiful weather now. Cold and windy, but beautiful. And we're just going to keep glassing, see if we can see anything. Pretty sure we can walk across that. Yeah. antlers from here and there's something a cow no it's two bulls it's two bulls they're scratching the not moose season but <laughs> we have probably seen over 24 moose and I'm sure some of them are eligible bulls because I can see their paddles and that's a few miles away yeah <laughs> so <laughs> we picked up this scope and it's it's awesome we really needed one of these and this is making it otherwise I could just see something in the binoculars but now I can tell you know it's a moose and what's going on over there so pretty neat yeah it's two of them they're they're scratching around oh Well, it's getting pretty late in the evening. We made a cup of coffee and we hiked about two ridges over and we came upon this really nice valley. It's almost like a funnel. And if something walks through here, we're gonna see it because it's basically just like a meadow down there. But nothing has walked through here yet. We're just gonna keep looking. We probably got close to an hour of sunlight left, so we'll see what happens. We're heading back to the hot tent and Eric and I made the decision that we're gonna be heading out tomorrow. So sometime in the future, I hope that we can put more time and energy into hunting. It was a really fun experience and I, I can't ask for better weather. It's absolutely beautiful. It's definitely hands down the prettiest pace we have ever camped. And I'm looking forward to getting back into that hot tent because that also made the experience very nice. Okay, let's head up. <laughs> Do you think it's died down a little? Uh, yeah, it's definitely died down. It's definitely manageable, but... Ooh. Okay. Well, we're in a windstorm. It's the morning time, the morning we're gonna leave. It's probably about nine o'clock. <laughs> this is gonna be insane trying to hold up this tent, but we gotta get packed up at home. Not looking forward to this. <laughs> It kind of went away for a while, no, it creeped back up again. I think we're just gonna have to do it. Oh my god. Well, it's gonna be hard to pretend. So, yeah. Is it raining? 
Why did I let you drag me into this? seen anything more sweeter than this. Head down. Look at that. Like a G string on a guitar. No, a G string in your mind. Cut that part out. <laughs>